Okay, so from my understanding of this problem, basically all I have to do is I'm given some array as mm -hmm. uh, denominations and then an amount, and I need to figure out a way to create that amount using the fewest number of coins, right? Yeah. So I am guessing I have an infinite supply of each of these coins? Yeah. Okay, so uh, right off the bat, I know that I could uh, go ahead and sort the coin denominations, right, in order to figure out uh, which ones to pick. So okay. by default, I think uh, what I should have is that, you know, I'd want to pick the largest items first, right, to begin with, mm -hmm. uh, and as many of them as I could. And uh, moving on from there, I would try to pick smaller amounts, right? Right. So how does this really work out? Uh, if I can pick an item multiple times. Just imagining this as a recursive, you know, naive approach, what I can do is say that uh, I'm going to explore all of the trees, right? Um, mm -hmm. Which is that uh, for each denomination I have, mm -hmm. I will either pick it or not pick it and then recurse, right? Uh, right. As long as it's the case that I, I, I do have, you know, an amount that fits. Mm -hmm. um, when would I know that this is done? I would know that this is done when it turns out that I've made all of my coin selections, right? So let's say that I were to start off with doing an array dot sort. Uh, I guess I'll just, uh, what is it? Reverse after I sort instead of bothering um, with, you know, doing the negative values, right? So I have a uh, my starting value of index zero. I either pick it or don't pick it based on whether the amount that I have is greater than the denomination, then I recurse. Uh, I don't really update the indices ever, except for potentially when the amount that I have is smaller than what that you know uh, denomination would indicate, right? Uh, mm -hmm. So I already know that if a coin always has one, I'll always have a solution. Mm -hmm. And all of them should terminate uh, in these recursive paths. Except when it turns out that I don't pick an item, then it turns out that I'll have to increment the index manually, right? Um, but if mm -hmm. I do pick an item, then I don't increment the index. So, so that, that's a naive approach. And the uh, complexity for that ends up being, uh, let's say n is equal to the len of the array that I'm getting as input. It mm -hmm. should end up branching by n every time. Mm -hmm. uh, is that true? Yeah, because I can, I can, I can pick or not pick each of the items, right? Right. Um, but it's not really clear when the the uh, amount that I have. I, I guess the worst case for that is you know n times amount, right? Uh, or sorry, n to the power amount is the is the worst case here, which is you know very soon this becomes a huge solution because it's exponential time, right? right? So I'd want to make an improvement on, on this. Uh, and right off the bat, um, one of the things that seems relevant here is to uh, use dynamic programming. Uh, mm -hmm. Just because when I have this tree, there mm -hmm. should be a lot of overlapping subproblems, right? Mm -hmm. uh, and so when I think about it, what it means to a lot of the time use DP is to find solutions to subproblems. So it could mean uh, what is the maximum amount I can have given a specific amount using a specific amount of coins? Right. Mm -hmm. So this ends up being uh, a 2D matrix of solutions where, uh, let's say, going this way, I have zero to amount and then going, uh, you know, from uh, from the top down to the bottom. I would also similarly have zero to, you know, n minus one. Right. As the coin that I can pick or the set of coins that I can pick. Uh, is this true? Would I need to do this, or do I just need, or do I just need a mount, right? Uh, so that's a 2D array approach, or it might be that I need a 1D array that just goes from zero to a mount, right? Mm, right. Uh, so those are my two options. Mm -hmm. uh, let's see what happens if it if I have uh, the zero to a mount. So if I were to store uh, Say what I store here is actually going to be um, minimum number of coins I can use to make amount, and then of course the you know the 2D version I, I say minimum number of coins to make amount given 
X coins to use. I, mm -hmm. it, it seems almost like I should be able to do this with, uh, you know, solely the 1D array. So uh, if I were to go through the example of uh, amount 11 with 1, 2, and 5, let's say I have 0, so I have 1, 2, uh, let's just do this to, I guess, 4 and see what we get until then. Because to 4, uh, if the amount is 4, I know that the answer should be uh, 2, right? So <clears throat> what I can say uh, for my uh, smallest, my, my very first value of amount, well, I guess there's also an extra uh, index for 0, right? So here, the, you always have the default value. The minimum number of coins you can use to make 0, uh, I'm guessing, stays as 0, right? Like, you don't say it's negative 1. Yeah, negative one. Use zero coins to make zero, right? Yeah. Cool. So, uh, given that I use, uh, I want to make amount one, I would have to go through every single item. Uh, here it's really obvious that the amount of coins that I want to use is one, right, to get the solution. But if I were mm -hmm. to generalize this, what I could say is I want to go through every denomination uh -huh. and uh, go back. Um, let's say uh, so the X amount based on the denomination and say that I would pick that amount going back X and then plus one, right? So here I check, can I use five? No, I can't. Here I check, can I use two? No, I can't. Can I use one? Yes, I can. Okay, let's see how much I can, how much it costs to make me, to make, uh, you know, just um, uh, zero, right? It, it takes me zero coins to make zero and now I'm using one coin, so I add one. And every single time, when I compare to the five, when I compare to the two, I compare to the one, I should be taking the min. So mm -hmm. I think this step generalizes so that now when I'm doing the two, I do the, you know, uh, to see how, how much it costs me to take, how many coins I'll need to do two. I go back first two, I see, oh, okay, this is going to take me zero coins to make zero plus one coin. Or mm -hmm. it could take me one minus plus the one coin, but that would be two, right? But we min every time. So this is still one. And mm -hmm. uh, now I have the general approach where I can say that make n plus one blank mount array uh, for each end index uh, check back x end in a mount array for each denomination uh, take min each time. Uh, using previous min plus one, and then at the end return uh, cost of n, mm -hmm. um, which is for me it's going to be a big O of n times amount runtime complexity. Uh, yeah, so that seems pretty reasonable. Is it okay if I code this out? Yeah, sure. So how did you end up with the uh, order of n star amount? Oh, because uh, I'm going to go through and I'm going to uh, do this calculation n times, right, through the n length of amount array. And each time I'm going to take the, I'm going to go through the entire denominations, right? So where n is the number of denominations. I want to check, uh, I want to get the minimum number of uh, coins I can use given any of those denominations. So, so that's where the n comes from. So, so n, for, n for each. Actually, um, for each, you say if I. Cause say in index two, right? Or okay, let's say I'm at index six. I could either use the five coin, I could use the two coin, or I could use the one coin, right? And it's yeah. not clear which one of those would be the minimum until I check. Right. And yeah. So uh, it's not always going to be the largest coin, right? Sometimes actually the smaller coin might be a better option. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah. Go ahead. So. Okay. So close min coins on uh, coins for amount. And what we'll have is uh, min cost is just going to be uh, 0 times uh, n plus 1, 
or sorry, it's supposed to be amount plus one, and then n is supposed to be length of coins. <clears throat> right. So what we want to do is for each of the uh, uh, amounts we can make, uh, I guess plus one, because um, this is an you know amount plus one array. Uh, and cost amount. What we're going to say is for uh, I guess we don't even need n, right? Because all we do is say for coin and coins. If uh, end is greater than coin, then what we can say is that, uh, oh, there's an error here. So I'm supposed to actually set the initial value as infinity, and then I'm supposed to set the min cost at zero as, as zero, because uh, otherwise I can't do a min operation, right? Um, later on, which uh, um, later on. Why is this required then? Infinity into some amount. So this is going to be, uh, you know, infinity, infinity, list, right? Of uh, where each value is infinity. Oh. So this and is then I set the, yeah, Okay, it's, got it. it's an array. And then I set no. the uh, the zeroth index to equal zero. Mm -hmm. uh, and so now I'm going through. And I want to start from the first index for amount and go all the way to the value amount because this is a you know exclusive. I'll pick each of my coins, and if it turns out that I can use that coin, which what mm -hmm. that basically means is that you know the the index that I'm currently on is greater than the coin, right? Mm -hmm. uh, or it's equal. I think that's a bug because if my index is one, then I should also be able to use the one. Yeah. So I'll say that the min cost at this index is going to be the min of the existing min cost, or it's going to be a uh, min cost of end minus this coin. So in the case of using uh, one, when our index is one, we subtract one and then we'll check, you know, min cost to make zero, right? Uh, plus one. <clears throat> I think this ends up being the entire translation of the idea we had in the code, uh, you know, and a Kind of summarize. Is it okay if I run this on a couple of test cases? Yeah, sure. Okay, so print min coins. Uh, let's just make all the coins equal. I can just use the example from one to five. So coins for amount eleven, and I know that this should be uh, is it three, right? Three. And the other example we had was uh, using just two, and our amount is is three. These are the basic test cases, and we got uh, so there is an error in that uh, I I am supposed to return negative one if it doesn't exist, right? So I would return min cost of amount if min cost of amount uh, is not equal to float of infinity. Otherwise, I uh, return negative one. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> and so that works out. So a couple of things I'd want to account for is I, I'm assuming that the amount will always be positive. Uh, can I assume that my coins is also always going to be a non-empty array? Mm, yes, sir. Okay. So if that were the case, uh, we don't need to handle that as edge cases for mm -hmm. you know an empty coins or negative amounts. Uh, yeah, I mean, if it's negative amounts, then of course uh, this array is going to be initialized to almost nothing, right? So I guess that is a problem, and that would have been an edge case, but luckily we don't have to consider that. Um, some other test cases we might want to check, though, as uh, our replacement edge case instead should be if we have, uh, you know, of course, a single item and it doesn't match, and a single item and it does match. And you'd also want to have, uh, say, zero. Where the amount you want to make is zero, this should, of course, return uh, zero as it is. <clears throat> and yeah, those seem to work out. And I think most other test cases, uh, given the constraints we give, just end up being a repeat of the you know initial two. Mm -hmm. So that will be my solution. OK, yeah, works well. Good. Uh, so. So we have uh, a bit more time. Uh, what do you want to do? Do we do you want to solve more cases, or otherwise we can just end the interview? Uh, 
doing other questions okay with you, then I guess I'm also good for that. Okay, yeah, so, yeah, so this is your next question. Let's Uh, okay, so this problem, I think I've done it before, yeah, right. um, and I can try and give a description of how it works out. Mm -hmm. uh, though I don't remember if I coded this. So basically, for finding the median, what you should be able to do is, uh, I guess this is, uh, okay, this isn't going through the array. This is just going to have the adnum. So you would want to make it so that uh, the find median operation runs in constant time but the add num operations end up running in logarithmic time and you can accomplish that by uh, maintaining two separate heaps one min heap and one max heap and okay. what you would want to do is uh, you know add your items to the heaps and whenever mm -hmm. it turns out that your uh, heaps the the size difference between them is greater than one then in that case you would want to uh, push off an item from the larger one to the smaller one, and it until it turns out that you know it's there. The largest difference between them is one again, right? So if you uh, wanted to get the median, uh, what you should be able to do as look is look at the size of your min heap and max heap. If they're the same, you take the root of both of those numbers and uh, you know divide by two. If they're mm -hmm. not the same, indicating it's an odd number, then you would just take the root of the larger heap, right? And for uh, the constant operation part, it's obvious because we can get the root in constant time. And mm -hmm. the add num portion is logarithmic because rebalancing as well as inserting into a heap takes, uh, you know, logarithmic time, right? Yeah. Um, yeah. Should I code this one out? Um, yeah. If, so uh, I'm not sure about Python. Is, uh, does Python have a, a heap data structure that you can use or like do you have to code that up? Uh, it, it does have a heap data structure, yeah. Uh, yeah, that's interesting. Oh, <laughs> let me find something else. 